Okay guys, so this tutorial is going to be starting from the basics. So there's gonna be a few different stitches that I'm gonna teach you about. Um, the yarn that I am gonna be using is the I Love This Yarn. This one is the red and gray. It recommends that you use the crochet hook I, which is also I or nine, the 5.5 millimeter. I am using just a little bit smaller of a hook. It just seems to be my favorite. I'm using the H8 and I'm using the 5.0. So just make sure that sometimes when you buy different hooks, they can have different size gauges on them and the colors can be different. So don't always go by the collar, go by the millimeter hook that you have. The smaller the hook recommendation, the smaller and tighter your stitches are gonna be. The larger the hook, the more spaced out and loose your stitches are gonna be. So just make sure that based on what kind of blanket that you want, that when you start your blanket, if it's gonna be a long-term thing, make sure that you write down the size yarn that you're buying, where you're buying it from, what color it is, and what uh, hook that you're actually using. Because if you restart a, a pattern later down the road and you use any wrong or different size, when you go to put your blanket together, it is going to be larger or smaller. It won't look right and you might not be able to finish your project that you started. So with doing any kind of blanket, whenever you start, you there's a couple different ways but my favorite way is to put your finger out and take the yarn behind the finger and go around the finger twice to where the yarn is in front and then you're gonna take your thumb and your middle finger and you're gonna grab the yarn you're gonna take the back hoop and you're gonna pull it over top of the front one don't, but don't go over top of your nail and then you're going to grab the back one, and then you're going to pull it over top of the front and around your finger, and then you're gonna let go. And then it's gonna create a knot right here called a slip stitch. So when you put your needle in and you let go, you have a tail and you have your working now, how I do mine, when I, you, you need tension in your yarn. If you don't hold it right and you don't have tension here, it is like impossible to be able to do this and keep a, you know, a, an even flow on all your stitches because if you pull your yarn too loosely or too tightly, um, when you go to turn your work and go back or when you're doing a square, uh, it'll all be uneven. So you need to make sure that you're holding your yarn correctly. So after you have that, so let's do that again. So take your finger, point it, take the yarn from behind. So I'm holding the yarn in my three fingers over here. Go around twice, hold it, grab the back yarn, pull it over. Then now grab the new back yarn and pull it over while pulling your finger up and holding it, let go. You'll create your knot. And there you have your first stitch. So what I do is I take my yarn with my palm facing me through my pinky and my ring finger, flip it over to where now you're seeing the yarn go through your pinky and your ring finger on the back side. And this is going to be slightly tight, not too tight, not too loose. And then come around and bring your middle finger and your thumb to grab your tail. So you're putting a little bit of tension. Then you're going to take your hook and you're going to what we call yarn over. So that means that anytime that you read Y-O in any of the books or someone says to yarn over, that's where you take the yarn and you go over the hook. And so you're grabbing the yarn and you're twisting down. So when I go, I go underneath the yarn and I grab it and I twist and you almost twist at the same time so that now the hook is going down. So when you yarn over, you grab it and twist to where the hook is looking down towards your thumb and then you'll pull it through that loop, and that's a chain. So you yarn over, twist down, and pull through the loop. Now you have two chains. Yarn over, twist down, pull through the loop. That's three. Yarn over, twist down, 
that's four. Yarn over, twist down, that's five. Yarn over, twist down, that's six. So if you wanna keep making chains, you can get faster. I'm just going to keep chaining until I have enough where I'm going to show you where we're going to turn the work and we're going to work some different stitches. All right. So we have our first chain. So whenever you go to turn your work, you're always, almost always, going to work in a third chain from your hook. So you have the last stitch that's around your hook. You've got which is one, then you've got two and three. So I'm working, if you count on top, one, two, three, because you're already working in the first stitch, two, three. So you wanna go into the third stitch from the chain. So when you go in, you can see that you've created like a little braid, and in each braid, there's a top stitch so that you can go in between the two if you kind of space them out. So when you go into that stitch, now see, look, I have pulled my hoop around my hook loosely. And if you don't have a good tension here, when I go to put it in there and pull through, that doesn't look right. It's very loose and you don't want to do that. That's an accident. So go back through, pull your yarn back over your hook and pull it tight. And then you have to move your hand and re-thread your yarn around your hand. So I'm gonna work one, two, three. I'm gonna work in the third chain from my hook. When you go in, this is called a single crochet. So you're gonna go into that third chain space, yarn over, pull through a loop. So now you have one loop two loops around your crochet hook. And then you're gonna yarn over again and you're gonna pull through both loops. So go into the next chain. You're gonna go into the chain space, yarn over, pull up a loop. So now you have one, two on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops at the same time. And that's a single crochet. Next chain space, you go through, yarn over, and pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two loops, single crochet. Go through the next space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops, single crochet. Into the next space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both into the next space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both. Into the next space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both. And then complete across your single crochets. When you're working back your first, so if you're doing a continuous blanket, a lot of baby blankets or beginner blankets, where you chain like 100, 200, depending on the width that you want the blanket. Make sure that when you're chaining over your single crochets that you are not letting this twist. Because if you let your chain twist, it's going to be off. So you need to make sure that this remains flat all the way across and that your braid, you're always working in the top and not twisting it and working into a bottom. So go ahead and finish your single crochets, go into the space, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through both, and get to the very end. So these are all single crochets. So anytime that you're going to turn your work, you always chain one, so yarn over and just pull up one loop, and then turn it around. And now you're working in the back side of your blanket. So they always look slightly different, the front side to the back side. So now working on the back side of the blanket, I want to show you how to do a half double crochet. 
So when you do a half double crochet, you put the yarn over your hook. So you yarn over, but you don't pull through the loop, okay? If you would have yarned over the needle portion, you could have pulled through and did another chain, but we're not doing that in this stitch. So what you do is you yarn over so that you already have two around your hook. And then now you're gonna go into the first space that you can see, first space right here. So you've already yarned over, put the needle in that first space, yarn over, pull through a loop. See, now you have three. Yarn over and pull through all three. And that's a half double crochet. So yarn over, go into the next space, Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. And that's a half double crochet. So yarn over, you have one, two. Go into the next space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three at the exact same time. Yarn over, go into the next space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, go into the next space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, go into the next space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, go into the next space, yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull up all three. Yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, pull through all three. And then just go ahead and complete all the way across. So we're at the very end. So you can see how the stitches on top are definitely bigger than the stitches on the bottom. Okay, go ahead and chain one and turn your work. So now I'm going to have you learn a double crochet, which a double crochet seems to be in like every project almost. So we're actually gonna chain two. So anytime you chain to work a double crochet, you always wanna chain two because you want your first chain to be as tall as a double crochet because you don't want your work to be smaller on the ends with just one chain and then having to work up into the middle of the blanket as a, small, as a bigger stitch. So go ahead and chain two. When you do a double crochet, so we're, again, we're working in the tops of all the stitches all the way across, you yarn over, go through, pull up a loop. So now you have three. You yarn over and you pull through the first two. So now you have two left. Yarn over again and pull through the last two. And that's a double crochet. So yarn over your hook, get two loops on your hook, go through your next space, yarn over, pull through two loops. So now you have three on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over again, pull through the last two, and that's a double crochet. So yarn over, go through your next space, pull through two, and then pull through the last two. Yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, go through the first two, go through the last two. Yarn over, go through your next hoop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over your hook, go through your next space. Yarn, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. 
yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go through the next space. Yarn over, you have three on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two hoops. Yarn over, pull through the last two. And those are double crochets. And just keep practicing. All the way across. One really neat thing about yarn that changes colors is that it can give you a different looking blanket without having to change the color of your own yarn, which is always really nice. Okay, So I'm at the very end. As you can see, my blanket, because I'm changing my stitches, feels a little bit thicker on the top than it is on the bottom. But you can see that each stitch gets taller and taller. So you have your single, you have your half double, and then you have your double. So chain three, one, two, three, turn your work. And now I'm gonna show you how to do a triple crochet. So they're all very similar. I'm pulling out my yarn. So they're all very similar, same process. So into the next space, we're gonna yarn over twice. So you already start with three hooks, okay? And then you go into the first space, yarn over and pull through. So now you have four. You're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you do it three times, making it a triple. Yarn over twice. So you have three to start out with. Go through the next space, yarn over, pull up a loop. So now you should have one, two, three, four. Yarn over, pull through the first two. Yarn over, pull through the middle two. Yarn over, pull through the last two. Triple crochet. Yarn over twice, into the space, pull up total of four, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, middle two, yarn over, last two, triple crochet. Twice, go through the next space, yarn over, pull through, pull through, pull through, pull through. Pull through. Yarn over twice. Next space. Pull up, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Yarn over twice. Next space. Pull up four. One, two, three. One thing that I've always done is I have a lot of control with my thumb on my yarn so it doesn't slide too much when I go into the next one and I hold on to my hoops until I'm ready to use them. So when I pull through the first two, I'm holding these two back so they don't try to get in the way. Pull through the next two, still holding this one back so it doesn't get in the way. And then you are eventually gonna get faster at it and just go ahead and complete all the way over. And I'll show you a few more stitches. All right, so go ahead and chain two. Turn your work. So as you can see, when you do a triple crochet, it's a lot more loose and gap as opposed to the double. And then when you come down to the half double and then the singles, 
are going to give you the tightest blanket. So depending on how much space you like. So when somebody tells you um, in a tutorial um, or if you're reading it in a book, you can do a front post and a back post double crochet or even a single crochet. So you're gonna work the same stitch that you've learned down here, but depending on where you put it. So, so far we've been using the spaces at the top of the last row of every single one that we've done so far. Whereas when they tell you to use the post, they're talking about this. And I like showing this on the triple because it's so much bigger and easier of a space to work into. So when you work a double crochet and you do a back post, it, you are gonna come in from behind the post and I will show you what I mean. So go ahead and yarn over, just like you're gonna do a double crochet, and take your needle, okay, and come in from behind the back of the post, go around the front of it, and bring it back. So when you have your needle around the post coming in from behind, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the yarn and you're gonna pull it around, okay? Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then now you've worked a double crochet around the back of your stitch. So again, yarn over, go through the back to grab your yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. All right, yarn over, go around the back of the loop, grab your yarn, pull it up. So now that you still have your three, yarn over and work your double crochet. And you're working in the back, yarn over, go around the hoop from the back, Pull it up, double crochet, yarn over, go around the back, pull up your yarn, double crochet, yarn over, go around the back, double crochet, yarn over, around the back, crochet yarn over so this is the back so when you see the back of it when you turn your work you can see the post being around the back of your needle so when you grab your yarn you're pulling it in the back yarn over go around the back Pulling it up. And then complete your back post double crochets. So as you can see, when you work in the back post, it gives you definitely a different kind of stitch look. And the neat thing is, is if you use this yarn in the back to be a different color than this yarn, you'll see almost like little dash stitches, which is, which is actually really cool. So go ahead and chain two, turn your work, and so now I'm gonna show you how to do a front post double crochet. So we're gonna work them in the same stitches that we just made around these double crochets. And so a front post is a lot like a back post, except for we're going to go in the front of the post. So yarn over and you know how we came in from behind? This time we're gonna just stay in the front and we're just gonna go around the back of it. So now the post is in front of the needle as opposed to being in the back. So when you went in from behind, 
the post was in the back of your work back here when you flip it over. So again, a front post is you come in from the front of the post, go behind it and around to the other side, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, grab your yarn, pull through two, grab your yarn, pull through two, and that's a double crochet. And then see now you can see your stitch in front. So it's almost like they're stacking on top of each other. So yarn over, go through on the front side, Put the post in on top of your needle, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, grab your yarn, pull through two, grab your yarn, pull through two. So we're about to change color. So this will be a nice yarn over, go through on the front of your work, go and put the post on top of your needle, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, grab your yarn, pull, yarn, pull. So now you can actually see how it is stacked on top and that's a front post, double crochet. So go across, the front posts are definitely easier than the back posts because I feel like when you pull up that first loop on a back post double crochet, it feels like it's gonna slide off your hook and sometimes it does. Yarning over, go in from the front of the work around the post. Okay, there's my last one. All right chain two, turn it around. So as you can see, your stitches, depending on where you put them, how you work them, it changes the work. It can give it texture, more of a 3D effect. You can see how when you turn it to the back, you can see like those stitches that I was talking about by working a front post and a back post just depending on how you want your work to look. So another one that I wanted to show is um, a popcorn stitch. So with a popcorn stitch, you're going to work, we're gonna work in the second one over. So you're gonna do four single crochets in one stitch. Let's just chain one. So four single crochets. So yarn over, pull up, that's one. Yarn over, that's two. Go into the same space, yarn over, that's three. Same space, yarn over, that's four. So you have four single crochets all in the same space. You have a hoop on your hook. Take it out, don't pull it out, leave that hoop right there. Go into the first single crochet that you made from the back. Go in from the back, go through the top. Now grab that yarn, put it around your hoop, your hook, and pull through. And then now do a single crochet in this just one. And then when you turn it around, you can see you have like a little bubble or a popcorn stitch. And this will always be in the back of your work. So if you want to do another popcorn stitch, you do four single crochets. One, two, three, four, Take your needle out, but leave the hoop. Go in the fourth, so you can see one, two, three, four. Go in from behind the first single crochet. Take your needle to the hoop, put it around, and then just pull it through. 
Then make one more single crochet to anchor it down. And that's your popcorn stitch. I have a tutorial on making bubble letters. It is very, very easy because it's pretty much all single crochets and popcorn stitches. Um, and how you can design your own blanket or individual squares. So that is all that I'm gonna do for this tutorial. I think 30 minutes of practicing different kinds of stitches you know, you can get the idea of just how to do them, how practicing and, you know, doing it over again, fast forward, pause, rewind, just make sure that you're working it evenly and just when you're done, because there's nothing you're really probably going to do with this kind of blanket. This was just practicing, so unravel all your work. And now when you go to another tutorial, you'll have an idea of all the different kinds of stitches um, and how to do them. And if you want to come back just for practice or if you just wanna come back to find out how to just do a specific stitch, go ahead and do that. Um, and just keep learning and reading all your different kinds of stitches and share how you do it, but then you can just start on over. So enjoy crocheting guys.